remarkable thing is that Bitcoin is over $40,000. Uh, we've had massive headwinds in 2023. Uh, a lot of those were self-inflicted wounds. You know, uh, I was talking to a couple people before the panel. Over the last 18 months, you've had Celsius, Three Arrows, FTX, Binance. And yet here we are, you know, as Michael described, uh, in a really interesting looking forward position. I'm extremely optimistic about 2024. So I, I think, uh, if anything, I, I, it's an opportunity to step back and really focus on some of the first principles. And what I mean by that is compliance always mattered. I think that, you know, we're now at a time, if we want crypto to flourish and achieve some of the things we want it to in the future, I think we have to make sure we stay true to those first principles. We have to make sure we're focused on something more than speculation. Utility has always mattered. I think sometimes we lost sight of that uh, in the fervor. But again, you know, people had, as Michael described, I think not, it wasn't so many Davoses ago that people were like, you know, Bitcoin's, it's it's done. Yep. And uh, yet here we I'll throw one quick reaction. In your question, you said something about, you know, how is it different? And I, I, I'll say, I think the question is wrong. Like, it's not different. KYC, know your customer, still matters. Anti-money laundering, still matters. You know, in the U.S., you have OFAC and other, you know, I can't name all the acronyms. But I, I think if we start with the point of view that it's different, it's like, I mean, I think the, the uh, secretary said earlier, you know, if it's the same, let's regulate it the same. Like, and so I don't think it's that different. The other thing is a slightly off topic, but I, that we uh, glanced over. One of the things I think will happen if I were to predict 2024 and beyond, as big money, institutional money comes in, they, right now we have one ETF. I think people look at it as an asset class, and I think you will see other ETFs come. And, I, and by the way, this is an area where the U.S. is behind. You know, Europe has had a Bitcoin, effectively a Bitcoin ETF for a few years, and I think you're going to see that uh, spread because people often, particularly if you're in an endowment or an institution, you're you're not buying one stock, you're not buying one bond, you're buying a basket, and you're diversifying that risk. Welcome, Welcome to the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to join the patrons. If you're not a part of patrons, make sure you're hitting the cash app. And we have Giancarlo on crypto innovation. Says that it's very threatening. But guys, we know the big banks and big corporations have been behind crypto from the beginning. And Giancarlo is just playing the Hegelian dialectic, the same as Anthony Scarmucci, says that Elizabeth Warren broke a deal with Biden back in 2020 to drop out the race, so therefore Janet Yellen and Gary Gensler can get in. But guys, from the beginning, I told you that Gary Gensler and Janet Yellen are the NWO chess pieces in order to move the fourth industrial revolution forward. Remember, you got to have someone against it, and you got to have someone for it. We have too many videos of Gary Gensler talking about and promoting crypto. And Elizabeth Warren used to go after the banks, because we know the banks are the biggest what? I'll let you finish that. And then, guys, the big one. We have CNBC finally admitting the AI is going to be causing plenty of layoffs. And the crypto teacher told you from the beginning, the robots, algorithms, and drones are here to take over the economy, pay each other with crypto, and the sheep are going inside the metaverse. And we have Will I Am, one of Klaus's young global leaders. You know, I bought you the video plenty of time. But he states that company greed could lead to AI being worse than social media. But guys, we know the corporations are leading this AI. It's only a handful of companies. So of course, there's going to be greed. Of course, AI is going to be worse than social media. And guys, that's the reason why I tell you it's so important to educate yourself on the technology. It's way more important than money. When the C word came, did you need money? No. You just needed the knowledge. So therefore, you wouldn't fall for the devil's tricks. And Will I Am talks about a talk show with the AI host. And we've seen that plenty of times over the emerging markets. With the metaverse and AI, guys, nothing is going to be real. And then Will I Am brings up the big one. The Constitution for AI. 
And we know the NWO is going to let AI run wild. We already see it. And we know the NWO caused the problem, wait for the reaction, and run in with the solution. It's going to be so bad that people are going to beg for it. And then, of course, the Constitution is going to come. The same way when it comes to transhumanism. The machines are going to take over and the people are going to want to be a machine. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. And if you don't believe it, just look at social media and see how many people that have fake body parts going to get surgery. It's unbelievable. And then, guys, we hear the drums are beating. We know the NWO needs that distraction, needs that crisis. And now some of Congress is calling out Biden by striking a sovereign nation without going through Congress. And remember, guys, this is all a movie. Your life is an illusion, and TV is your reality. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows, when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. My favorite author, Doug Adams, the, the author of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, once said that, and I'll, I'll paraphrase because I don't remember the exact quote, but it was that anything that's invented before you turn 35 is way cool and is probably going to be the source of a lifetime of engagement the rest of your life. But anything that's invented after you turn 35 is dangerous, suspect, and needs to be suppressed. I think there's a lot of that going on in crypto. And when we've got an administration that's, you know, pretty heavily populated by septuagenarians, in some case octogenarians, this is something that threatens everything they know about finance going back to their days when they had passbook sa savings accounts and checkbooks. And um, I can understand why this innovation is very threatening. I think as we go forward, whether it's a Republican or Democrat, whether it's a Trump or any other administration, we're going to increasingly see younger people moving in to serve. And younger people will bring with them a comfort level with networks. You know, our, they grew up in a networked world, whether that's a network of information or a network of, of gaming they're going to bring with them a notion of a network of value. And so I think that this innovation is going to proceed regardless of the next administration. On the other hand, however, I do think that, and, and I say this as someone who served both in Obama and Trump, but who tends to be on the free market side of the aisle, I do think that you'll see a greater emphasis on free markets and perhaps a greater comfort level uh, with allowing innovations to proceed, the same comfort level allowed me to greenlight Bitcoin futures five years ago. I think you'll see uh, a greater, and you'll so also see a greater emphasis on if innovation is going to take place, it, it, we, we want it to take place in the United States. Speaking of decentralization, that's yes. a good segue um, to talk about crypto here. Um, I was talking a lot about the spot Bitcoin ETF last week, um, which is seen as a real milestone do you see it that way? Do you think it's going to be the, the huge um, money bringer to Bitcoin that a lot of over, people are over, seeing? Over, over, over time it will be. And I think you, you guys addressed this last week, but it's worth noting. You have lots of investors that went into the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust at 2%. They bought it at uh, the Bitcoin at 50000 60000 69000 And so when the ETF became available and they were able to sell the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and take a loss for tax purposes. And you guys know this, they have to wait 30 days before they can reload. But it's a great arbitrage for these people. They can go from a 2% trust into a 21 basis point ETF and they have to wait. And there's a lot of churn uh, and a lot of volume churn as a result of that. But I think generally uh, the notion that this is an asset class that's here to stay uh, people like Abigail Johnson at Fidelity and Larry Fink are working on it at BlackRock. Uh, I think it's great for the industry. Now, what I will say is that we've overly politicized regulation in the country. And I would love to see the SEC move to a more nonpartisan, nonpolitical standard the way the Fed is. Uh, and I'm wondering if that could ever happen, because every time we, we get a new president and we get a, a right-leaning president or left-leaning president, we bring somebody in that politicizes so, the regulation. That's so wait, very just bad to be for the clear, So you think that the SEC's reluctance to really put a stamp of approval on crypto products has been a political stance? No question. Yeah, this is all born from Elizabeth Warren. She cut a deal with uh, Joe Biden in 2020. She dropped out of the race. 
in exchange for having a lot of say over what happens in the banking industry and the world of financial services. And so she was part of selecting Janet Yellen, and obviously her sidekick in Washington is uh, Gary Gensler. Um, and I, you know, I call them the regulatory access of evil because they're not studying the protocols, they're not studying the technology, they're making this symbolic statements. They're like, oh, this is about fraud, this is about money laundering, uh, where it's not saying that there isn't some money laundering and fraud, but there certainly is. There's more of it with the U.S. dollar, by the way. And I just think the point is, if they calm down and really study the technology, they'd be running towards the technology, not away from it. And frankly, Mr. Gensler knows better. Well, listen to his 24 lectures at MIT. He's actually, at heart, a blockchain enthusiast. So Google was criticized for moving too slowly during the year of efficiency, but this year, no mega cap is cutting as much and as quickly. Units affected, they also include hardware, engineering, ad sales, so far. Last night, CEO Sundar Pichai told his workforce to expect more cut. And uh, blame it on the machines, it sounds like. AI made me do it. AI to you. Mm. Um, what have you learned on this on this journey, this trip? And and are we at peak AI, or you think this is just the beginning? No, we're not at peak. We're Pac Man. Pac Man. If anything, it's Mario Brothers. We haven't even got to Halo or Xbox. <laughs> we haven't got that yet. So this is a uh, it's 1984, as far as in a good way. <laughs> no, both ways. <laughs> okay, well, on, let's go to that though. Let's go straight to the show. Give us the, the in the good way, and give us in the bad way. As you see it. Well, it hasn't gotten bad as what social media has done to society. <laughs> we haven't seen that yet. And let's hope that regulators, policymakers get their stuff together so it doesn't end up that way. We can't have it to where companies lead with greed because we're just going to have some version even worse what Web 2.0 and social media did to society where our civil liberties are compromised, democracy is compromised, privacy compromised. We shouldn't repeat that with this level of tech where we have dupe machines, mimic machines. But the technology, on the, side, on the other hand, is spectacular. I'm hosting a radio show on Cutie Pie. Pie. And Cutie Pie is my co-host, first show with the AI is a co-host. I'm really excited about that. My company, FYI.ai. And how does that work? Tell us, to take us behind the scenes of how that show actually oh, operates. Just like this show. Okay, except? Except for my co-host is an AI. Right, so is there pauses <laughs> and a wait? Like when you say something, and then does it, yeah, is, like, it, is it right on? And is there somebody typing behind the scenes? You no, have to, you have no. to tell it anything beforehand? No. So you're no. just chit-chatting? It's just, it's mind-boggling that you could just cop in and not have any preparation and dive in on any subject, popular culture, real-time information, historical stuff, banter. It, it's okay, freaking so amazing. What's the weirdest thing Cutie Pie ever said to you? Like, Say again? What's the weirdest thing Cutie Pie ever said to you? Anything throw you off? Oh, I pulled it up on it. We, we were doing, I was doing a panel the other day and we were, I was having like joking banter with it earlier on in the morning. And so when I, uh, uh, when I introduced um, Cutie Pie to the to the folks that I was on a panel with, it called me user, and I'm like, Yo, why are you, why are you messing around like that? I'm just pulling your leg, Will, right? And so it being witty, we didn't program it to be witty. So but it's funnier than a lot of right. people. But we were I was joking with it earlier, right? And so it probably was continuing with the joke banter. Mm -hmm. So where is the freaking constitution for AI? Everybody making it should have signed some constitution. Well, where's the license? Like you have a you have a car, you drove it, we all took a test. And the companies that make the cars have regulations, like seat belts, airbags, all these things, pedometers. Technology that's always like, runs right. out of regulation though, and that's been the problem. But yeah, yeah, but here we need to move fast on this. Yeah. It's an election year. Yeah. People need to know and ask the question, like, am I talking to a human here? What is this? Doesn't Article One of the Constitution prohibit the White House, the president, from unilaterally launching attacks on a sovereign nation without the approval of Congress? Yes. I mean, this is not a complicated question. The White House had time to talk to the Australians, the Canadians, the United Nations, the Brits, 
for a month and a half and they didn't have the courtesy to come to Congress, this is a violation of the Constitution. The president has the right for imminent self-defense, where he can notify Congress in 48 hours. That means if the Houthis launch a missile against our ship, you could take that missile out. But you can't have bombing attack after bombing attack without congressional authorization. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance, agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American. You know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it is it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, Nuno Crypto's Coinbase bet you bonus. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The Stock Channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks, 
And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.